Today in Vivabytes we are going to talk about geometric morphometrics um, and look a little bit more in detail at the pros and cons of different uh, visualisation methods. The source I'm using is Klingenberg 2013, um, so general review. Um, and so let's get started. So why use geometric morphometrics uh, instead of traditional morphometrics? Well, there's a an ease of visualization. Um, there's also uh, morphological change uh, in an anatomical context, um, and it's perhaps a more effective uh, way of uh, communicating complex morphological changes. Um, so there are two main principles to visualize the sh shape change, and they rely on either uh, showing the relative displacements of corresponding landmarks uh, in different shapes, or showing uh, the deformations of we're using a regular grid or outline or surface interpolated from the shape change. Uh, you can very easily combine the two. Uh, now just a quick definition, uh, what is shape? Uh, strictly speaking it's defined as all the geometric features of an object except for its size, position and orientation. Uh, you'll notice that because um, it, it excludes size. This ascribes to the Gold Muzzy Man school of thought rather than the Huxley Jolica, but uh, that's that's another video. What is uh, Kendall's shape space? Well, uh, so each possible shape uh, for a given number of landmarks and dimensionality corresponds to a single point in this shape space, um, and every point in the shape space corresponds to a particular shape. Uh, now, the simplest case is um, that of triangles, um, where there are three dimensions, three sides, three dimensions, three landmarks. Um, and uh, the shape space, Kindle shape space, for a triangle is actually a sphere, so it's the only one you can visualize. Uh, for more landmarks, uh, you can't really visualize it because we can't really see more than 4D, or at least 3D in this case. Um, so as these shape spaces are curved, uh, non-Euclidean spaces, it's actually useful to have a local approximation um, by having a linear Euclidean tangent space that touches the shape space at the location of the average shape in the sample, um, which is what I think corresponds to the consensus wing. Uh, so for biological samples, this is quite a reasonable assumption and there's not too much distortion. In the shape tangent space, um, that's the local approximation, each point is also a unique particular shape. Um, and therefore from this one-to-one -one correspondence, it's very possible to reconstruct the physical shape uh, at each, lo each location in either shape or tangent spaces. So what this means is if you take any, uh, uh, any location in either of the spaces, you can very easily reconstruct um, the original configuration, the original, for example, wing and arrangement of landmarks uh, relative to each other, uh, barring space, uh, size, uh, position and orientation, obviously. Um, now, little point of uh, vocabulary, shape change is different from a difference in shape. Now, difference in shape, um, what does that mean? Uh, two shapes are different, but there is no direction, no start uh, or end. Um, and on the other hand, shape change, two shapes are different, but there is a direction. There is, a, you go from a starting shape to a target shape. Um, and it's described by a vector with a direction and a magnitude from the starting point uh, to the point representing the target shape. Um, in, in either shape or tangent spaces. Um, now, multivariate procedures uh, such as principal component uh, or partial least squares analysis, these provide a new system, a system of new coordinate axes in the shape tangent space. Um, and the direction of the axes are features of shape variation. So, with magnitude and sign, each axis specifies shape change. So that's what you sort of think of uh, when you're doing, uh, for example, principal component one. Uh, if you plot PC1 against PC2 scores, then you've got sort of one direction. You, you can see like a specific shape change. Um, and if you go in the other direction, the, the shape change will be in the other direction. 
Um, if the analysis is in the space of Procrustes coordinates, so tangent space, coefficients from the multivariate analysis, so either eigen, the eigenvector for PCA or the singular ve vector for partial least squares, uh, can be used to visualize shape change uh, with scaling. Multivariate regression of shape on another variable yields a vector of uh, regression coefficients that indicates the change of shape per unit of change in the independent um, or predicted um, variable. Shape change must always be placed in the context of the shape. This, this helps to make sense of, of what the shape change means. So, for example, it's great having vectors, um, but uh, it's uh, a lot easier to sort of visualize if you've got a wing and sort of say, right, okay, this landmark moves uh, in this direction rather than just the vectors. Um, it also instills uh, biological meaning. For example, um, if you think of a fly wing and a uh, mouse mandible, you might have 15 landmarks in each. But it doesn't. There's no biological meaning if you place the fly shape change vectors on a mouse mandible. There's no. There's no logical reason why you would do that. There's no um, crossover between the two species in any way. Um, quick point about scaling. Scaling is a compromise, um, so it must be big enough to to clearly um, to make any change clearly visible. But it mustn't be so big that there are major distortions. So it's really sort of trial and error um, and uh, your own judgment really. Um, now let's come on to the pros and cons of different methods. So 